Okay, so in this video, we're going to be looking at polar coordinates. Um, first, we're going to kind of talk about what are polar coordinates, what does the polar grid look like. Um, then we're going to find and pot, plot points um, given in polar coordinates. And then we're going to convert from Cartesian or the usual like rectangular coordinates, x, y coordinates that you're given into polar and vice versa. Take polar coordinates and, um, and convert back into um, Cartesian coordinates. Okay, and then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a couple graphs of, of polar functions, um, and you'll just need to familiarize yourself with those. We won't do any actual graphing um, of the polar functions, but we'll take a look at a couple and kind of understand what they mean. Um, okay, so um, I'm talking about coordinate systems in this, in this video, so let's start with like defining what a coordinate system is. So a coordinate system is just a way to define a point in space. So if you have a point in space, what we're typically used to doing when we graph um, is graph it on a, um, on a Cartesian plane with our x and y values. Okay, so we have an x value and y value, that's our point. Um, those two numbers kind of define where that point is um, on that plane. Um, the x value being that horizontal distance that you go from the origin and then you go up from that x-axis y amount in, it, in whatever units you're dealing in. Um, Okay, and um, this type of grid is called a Cartesian coordinate system um, and plotting points x, y, and x, y, and pretty much all your math background. So thus far, you've probably been dealing mostly with the Cartesian um, coordinate system. Okay, um, but the question is, is there another way we can define a point on a plane um, with given two pieces of information? And actually, yes, there is. We know um, that distance from the origin, um, or we can figure out that distance from the origin, um, and talk about the angle that um, you are from the positive x-axis. And, and, um, and those two pieces of information can also land you on that exact same point. Okay, so r and theta um, can also be used to uh, define where that point is on the plane. And when we use r and theta, we're using um, the polar coordinate system. And you won't usually see um, a Cartesian grid when you're using the polar coordinate system, you'll see um, the polar grid, okay? And a polar grid has circles uh, um, around the origin, or sometimes this, this center called is called uh, the pole, or the pole for, uh, instead of the origin, like we're used to it, being called um, in the Cartesian, Cartesian system. But there's circles um, coming out from there and those are different radii all the way around that circle. It's all the different radii um, from, from that pole. Okay, so if you're on this circle, you're one unit away from that, that pole or that origin. Here you're two units away from the origin, three units away, where, regardless of where you are on this circle. Okay, and the other thing to note is that angles, when you're given a theta value in, for, a cart, for a polar point um, given in polar coordinates, that angle is always measured um, counterclockwise starting from the positive x-axis. Okay, so that means if you have an angle of zero radians, you're straight up on the, the x-axis here. Okay, but if you have pi over 2 or 90 degrees, um, I'm going to note here that with uh, polar coordinate systems, it's almost always in, in radians, so that's what we are going to deal with radians um, in this video. So it might be a good idea to um, have a quick refresher. Um, if you have your little thing you did when you did the trig unit, that would be pretty helpful in kind of reviewing. You have the radians and degrees on here, so this would be super helpful to have with you um, as you're doing this assignment. Um, but um, the angles are measured from the positive x-axis, so um, zero radians is here, pi over two is up here um, at the top, okay, and then you have um, pi over here would be 180, okay, and then three pi over two down at the bottom. And then it, and it could actually repeat, like if you had an angle of two pi, then you'd be here the same zero. So actually these kind of continue around and you can kind of have, you can keep spiraling around and around and around and, and plot points. Okay, um, but a lot of times you'll see it labeled just from zero um, all the way up to, well, just just before two pi. So a lot of times you'll see this labeled zero pi over two pi and three pi over two um, on a polar grid. Okay, um, so let's take a look at a point that is um, 
in a different quadrant, okay, because that example was up here. So if we're down here, again, as a reminder, that angle, so the R is the, the radius, but the angle is measured from that positive X axis. So you're never going to measure uh, clockwise here. It's always counterclockwise starting from the positive X axis is the theta or the angle that you would report um, for a polar uh, a point given in polar coordinates. Okay, so let's take a look at an example problem. Okay, so plot the following points um, that are given in polar coordinates. So the first point we need to plot is three pi over four. Okay, so I know I'm gonna be out here somewhere on this circle three, three units away from the origin. Okay, and specifically um, at pi over four. Okay, so this is pi over two, okay, or half, one half of pi, right, because I'm halfway between zero and pi. Okay, so one quarter pi or pi over four is gonna be halfway to pi over two. So I'm gonna be right here, okay, will be my point A, okay, um, circle three, and then pi over four is my angle. Okay, for point B, I am at ooh, negative two, that's kind of weird, okay. Well, two is right here. So we'll go back and figure out what the, the negative means after we find the angle. Um, five pi over six, okay? Well, five pi over six is gonna be right here, okay? Again, you can use your, your nifty little unit circle that you made in class, or if you don't have that, um, you can think about, well, um, five sixths of the way to pi, okay? If I were to split this up into six, it would be one, two, three, four, five over six would be right here. Okay, so here is my angle, okay, but I'm negative two. So instead of going this direction along the same direction as my angle is going out this way, I'm gonna go backwards. So I'm gonna go back here, one, two, and this is where I would expect to find point B, and, and indeed there is point B. Okay, so plotting point D, if you have a negative, you go from where your angle is, you go the opposite direction, okay, on that same line. Okay, point C. I'm at four, so I know I'm going to be on circle four somewhere, so this circle that's four units away from the origin. Okay, and then four pi over three. Okay, so four pi over three, I'm going to end up being, I'm less than three pi over two, okay, but I'm definitely more than pi, and I end up being right here. Okay, um, so four um, and four pi over three, this is where I end up, okay? And then finally, I want five, so I'm gonna be way out here on five, and, and I'm at point D here, okay? But negative pi over six brought me back here, um, and I've labeled this 11 pi over six as well. And that would be an equally valid way to get to point D, right? Okay, so negative pi over six would be instead of going positive or in my positive angle direction, which is counterclockwise, if you have a negative angle, you would go, that is when you go clockwise. Okay, so a positive angle is always counterclockwise in a polar coordinate system. If you have a negative angle, you go back, backwards. Okay, so negative pi over six, but I could have, very much easily just said that it was 5 and 11 pi over 6. That is also um, a valid way to, to um, just, uh, those are two valid numbers that are get you right to that same point. So what you end up having is you have, you could even have 23 pi over 6, okay? And that will get you to that same point. Or 35 pi over 6, that will also get you to that same point, okay? Going around, I mean, you're going around multiple times, it's a little repetitive and you don't need to, but <laughs> a little redundant, but it, you are getting to that same point every single, every single time. Okay, and another thing to note, we got to B with the angle five pi over six, right? So that took us five pi over six and then we went into the negative direction. Okay, so what we could do is go to five pi over six and then go to negative five and have negative five, five pi over six, and that'll get us to the exact same point. Okay, so basically, I'm kind of going blabbing on and on here, but basically, every single point on a polar coordinate, in, in a polar coordinate grid, there's an infinite number of polar coordinates that you, that will get you to that point, okay? Um, because you can 
kind of like the angle, you can just keep going around and around and around your circle multiple times and then get back to that same point, right? So um, there's an infinite number of polar coordinates for every point. And that's very different than the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, for every point, there's just one X and Y value that will get you to that point. Okay, so that's a big difference between the two coordinate systems. Okay, so that is plotting um, a point on a polar coordinate grid. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is looking um, if you have a point that's given to you in a Cartesian coordinate system and you wanted to convert it to polar coordinates, how would you go about doing that? Okay, so let's say we have this point. Okay, in our Cartesian coordinate system, it's x, y, and we're trying to convert into polar coordinates. I'm trying to find that r and theta value. Okay, so um, this shape right here should look pretty familiar. Okay, um, we know since it's a right triangle, we know Pythagorean's theorem that x squared plus y squared is going to equal r squared. Um, so we can actually find that r value if we know x and y. So again, we're converting from Cartesian to polar, so we're under the assumption that we know that x, those x and y values. Okay, so if we rearrange this slightly, we get that r is going to equal the square root of x squared plus y squared. And yes, there should be a plus or minus out in front of the square root, but we're just going to say that we're going to take the positive um, r value um, every time, usually when you do polar coordinates. So we'll just we'll just keep keep the positive value in this case. Okay, but it's important to note that yes, square root would be, you do have plus or minus there. Okay, but we're just going to choose the positive one, the positive value. Okay, um, so theta, not quite as straightforward, but still pretty straightforward. Okay, if we know y and x and we're trying to find theta, well, from trigonometry, we know tangent of this angle is going to equal y over x. Tangent of the angle equals the opposite over the adjacent, so y over x, okay? And then multiplying both sides by, um, or we can't multiply by anything. Um, we have tangent of theta, and we want to solve for theta, so we take um, inverse tangent of um, y over x, or arc tangent of y over x is going to give us that theta value, okay? Um, so those are our two equations. If we know x and y and we're trying to um, solve for r and theta, those are the two equations that we're going to use. One really important thing to pay attention to, though, was when you're, when you're solving for theta, this inverse tangent is going to give you a value between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So you have to pay attention to what quadrant your point is in initially to figure out the correct angle. If you're in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, you're going to have to add pi to whatever angle you um, you get when you have plugged it into this equation. Okay, so let's make a note of that, that you're going to have to add pi if um, your point that you're looking at is in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, um, because this function right, the inverse tangent on your calculator is just going to give you a number between negative pi over 2 and, and pi over 2. Okay, so here's our rules over here um, to for converting bit from Cartesian to polar. And let's go ahead and do an example problem. So let's say we have the point 3, 3 um, in, on a Cartesian um, coordinate plane, and we're going to try to convert those into polar coordinates. Okay, so we're trying to find that r value, and we're trying to find that theta value. Okay, so we know that our r is going to equal the square root of x squared plus y squared. And we know those are 3, both of them. So we have, um, basically, we end up with the square root of 18. Okay? And we take the square root of 18, that's 9 times 2, so we can pull the 3 out, because um, root 9 is, is 3. Um, so we get 3 root 2 as our um, exact answer for our radius value here. Okay, so that's that's awesome. We've solved for r. Okay, now we need to solve for theta because we're not quite there yet. Okay, so we know that our uh, theta is going to equal inverse tangent y over x, and that happens to be three over three. So basically, we're we're trying to figure out the tangent of what equals equals one. Okay, and um, and you may recall from from trig that that's going to be pi over four or forty five degrees. 
Okay. Um, so again, um, on your assignment, I'll have an exact, exact value table for you so that you can see these values and um, quickly see uh, your radians and degrees um, and your values of sine, cosine, tangent, um, just in case you don't have your um, nifty little unit circle that you made. Um, okay, so we have pi over 4 as our angle, 3 pi over 2 as our radius. So our point um, in polar coordinates is 3 root 2 um, pi over 4. Okay, so on our um, polar coordinate grid, this is what it looks like. And indeed, it looks like um, we're a little over, we're about 4.24, which is 3 root 2. Um, and then we're right on that pi over 4 um, line right here, because we're halfway between, between 0 and pi over 2. Okay, let's take a look at another practice problem where we're converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates. This time we have negative 3 root 3 over 2, comma, negative 3 over 2. And that's in Cartesian coordinates, and we want to convert into polar. Okay, so we're down here in quadrant 3. So when we're, when we're solving for our theta value, we're going to have to keep that in mind that we're in quadrant, quadrant 3. Um, but anyway, again, we're start, trying to solve for r and theta. And again, that theta is going to be all the way from the positive x-axis. So we're going to be more than pi radians. Um, and we start just the same way we started with the previous practice problem. Our r is going to equal um, the square root of x squared plus y squared. And um, so we need to take both those values and square them. Okay, so I'm going to get um, uh, 9 times 3 over 4 plus 9 over 4. Okay, and when we work that out, we end up with root 36 over 4. And that's really handy dandy because that's 6 over 2. Um, which just equals 3. Okay, so now we have to solve for theta. So we take the inverse tan, and I'm going to write a lot right now, and then I'll explain it. So we have um, y over x, okay? And um, to make this simpler and kind of simplify things, because I can kind of see that things will be simplified, we're going to go ahead and instead of having this as two division, like, a fraction over a fraction. Let's go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator because when we divide by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal. So we have three over two times two over three root three. Okay, so our twos end up canceling and our threes end up canceling and we're left with one over root three. Okay, so we got inverse tangent of one over root three. And if we multiply by root three over root three, we get three root three over three, okay? And again, you might re recall that that's going to be um, pi over 6, okay? If you take the inverse tangent, or can you, uh, inverse tangent, or you can use your calculator, um, or you can use Wolfram Alpha. I mean, you're at home, so um, you have the internet at your disposal, too. So calculator or Google or Wolfram Alpha is a good one. It gives you exact, exact answers, too. Um, so pi over 6 is what we get, but we have to remember this This is definitely more than pi over 6, right? Pi over 6 would be over here, like 30 degrees, okay? And we're definitely way more than 30 degrees. We are pi plus 30 degrees, okay? So we're in quadrant 3, so here's a situation where we get pi over 6, but we have to add pi to that to get the correct answer for our angle, okay? Um, and that's just because of this inverse tangent doesn't give us, it's, it's going to give us a between pi, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 as an answer. So you just, the thing to remember if you're over here in quadrant 2 or quadrant 3, you need to add pi. So we get 7 pi over 6. Um, and I actually, instead of just remembering you have to add pi, I realize that what the calculator is giving me is this right here, um, the angle from the x-axis. So I add 180 to that, or I add pi to that because I, I'm given this angle is what my, my calculator solved for. Okay, so I have my two, my r and my theta values. Um, so I know that point now um, in polar coordinates. Okay, so those are two examples of converting from Cartesian to polar coordinates.
Okay, now let's look at if you have something in polar coordinates and you want to convert into Cartesian or your xy coordinates um, for that same point. Okay, we're going to use um, kind of similar trig stuff that um, you may recall um, from um, previous lessons. Um, but you do know that um, if, you're, if you have a right triangle and you're trying to solve for x, um, then uh, cosine of this angle theta is going to equal x over r. Okay, in this case, you're trying to find x, you know theta and you know r, because I'm saying that you're given the polar, co the polar coordinates. So you know r and theta and you're trying to solve for x. Okay, so we can rearrange this by multiplying both sides by r. And we get that x equals r times the cosine of theta. Okay, so similar thing with the y here. We're opposite of the angle. Um, opposite over hypotenuse is going to be sine. So the sine of theta equals y over r. And then we rearrange that to get y equals r times sine theta. Okay, so those are going to be your two equations that are super helpful when you're trying to convert from polar to Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so we have an example problem here. So um, we're going to convert um, 3 um, at an angle at theta 3 pi over 4 from polar coordinates to Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so I've plotted the point here all right, 3 and then 3 pi over 4. Now it's, we're more than pi over 2. We're not to pi. We're 3 quarters of the way to pi. So again, if we were to break this up into fourths, here is our um, angle in radians is 3 pi over 4, and we're on... We're three units from that origin. So here's my point. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. We know that x is going to equal r times the cosine of theta. Okay. And theta is 3 pi over 4. Okay. So when um, I do that on my calculator or look it up or I look at my circle, okay, I know that this is uh, that the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is going to be negative root 2 over 2. Okay, I can also visualize a cosine curve, right? Cosine starts at, um, up at 1, okay? Once I get to pi over 2, that's where it crosses the x-axis. And then um, I'm negative, so I know my, my number is going to be negative for, um, for cosine if I'm in quadrant 2. Okay, um, so I have 3 times negative root 2 over 2. So the value that I have for x, negative 3 root 2 over 2. Okay, and now I'm going to do um, my y value, and y is going to equal r times the sine of theta. Okay, so sine of 3 pi over 4, um, again, I'm, it's a 45 degree angle, and the sine is going to be positive in that quadrant, so it's root 2 over 2. And so I solve 3 root 2 over 2, and I combine them together. Okay, so if I'm plotting that in Cartesian coordinates, those would be my x and y values. Okay. And I think when I, when I plug it into my calculator, I think I'm about, it's a little over, it's like two point, it's a little over two. But um, I don't have it on top. I mean, I could do it. It's a little over two. Okay. Um, for both of them. And I'm negative in the x and positive in the y, which makes sense if I'm in quadrant two. Okay, so this last thing we're going to do is look at some graphs of polar equations. Um, the first one we're going to look at is uh, just r equals cosine of theta. Um, so um, theta in this case is the independent variable, and so usually um, polar equations are, are r equals something. So r cosine theta is going to be a circle, okay, and um, so at... Um, zero radians, okay, cosine equals one. Okay, by the time you get up to pi over two, if we were looking at the Cartesian coordinate system, it'd be down at the x-axis at zero, right? So it's zero um, at pi over two, and then it starts going negative. So as you wrote, uh, as you go from pi over two all the way to three pi, um, it's actually negative, the value of cosine. So that's why you see this area here corresponds to when cosine is here, right? Because it gets to its, it's at, it's at a value of negative one, okay, when it's at pi. And then it's back to zero 
when it's at 3 pi over 2, okay? And then again, it approaches 1 when it goes back to 2 pi, okay? So from 0 to pi over 2, you're decreasing that radius, okay? Its value goes from 1 down to 0, okay? From pi over 2 to pi, you're going from 0 to negative 1, okay? From pi to 3 pi over 2, you're going from negative 1 back to 0, and then from pi over 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, you would be going back up to from 0 to 1. Okay, so it's kind of two, like to go around, you go around one time, you go around this little circle two times, if that makes sense. Um, okay, so sine, you're gonna get a similar graph, okay? It's gonna be up here though, and I want you to think about why that might be. So it'll be a, a circle um, between zero and one up here if you graph r equals sine um, theta. Okay, another curve we're gonna look at, um, this is called a cardioid, okay? And the reason is pretty obvious, it looks like a heart. Um, so um, you may have heard of like cardioid microphones, um, like if you are modeling how they pick up sound, um, it's kind of in this shape, a cardioid. So that's the, the cardioid graph looks like this. And, and the function is r equals one minus sine theta. Okay, and then you can get some really cool looking like butterflies or flower looking curves um, with polar equations. So for example, the equation r equals cosine of four, th four theta um, would look like this. Um, kind of how to actually graph that goes beyond of what, what we're gonna be talking about, but you can get some pretty fun looking polar curves. Um, okay, uh, last thing, let's, Let's talk about like applications. When are when are these used? Well, circular motion is um, a good example of when this polar coordinates um, could be applicable. Navigation sort of uh, uses this type of um, coordinates. Typically, navigation the um, like north pole is your zero, and then you rotate clockwise from there. So it's but it's it's a similar sort of deal. You get a kind of a radius or a distance and an angle. Um, in navigation, um, even though the coordinate system is slightly different. Um, so any sort of, if you're modeling any sort of systems with like radial fields, like gravitational fields or electric fields, um, this could apply. Um, polar coordinates could be useful. Um, radar, or like we said, modeling a microphone pickup pattern. Um, like for example, you could model that with a cardioid sometimes depending on the microphone. Um, so there's definitely a time and a place for polar coordinates. Um, through your mathematical, per, mathematical career, you probably will mostly use um, Cartesian coordinate system. Um, but uh, if you go on in math, or there are some applications that it's just much simpler to use polar coordinates than it would be to use um, the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, and it definitely is an application of all the, all the um, trig functions that you learned. Um, so it's a good review of that as well. So thanks for watching. Um, I hope this was helpful.